Hi everyone. Welcome to Seize the Day Whale Tail Project. Enjoy making it. We are going to have a whale of a good time. I'll see you at the end. Okay. Hi everyone. Let's get started with our project. Okay, so this is a uh, finished item. This was my original sample. We have our whale tail, some waves, our little beachy saying. Um, here's another one similar with a different shade of blue. Um, same words, maybe slightly darker. And here is a blank. And here we're going to begin our project. So everyone has a blank piece of wood uh, painted. We have our whale tail design, our seize the day design, a hammer, some nails, our little pot of black paint, Here's a pencil. Uh, this is embroidery thread. It's cotton thread. Everyone has a different shade of blue. Um, some of them are dark. Some of them are a little lighter. Some of them are turquoisey. But everyone's got one hank of thread. A pair, I'm sorry, a, uh, some school glue. This is optional. You don't need this. Uh, some tape. It's also optional, but I think you need this a little bit more. And lastly, a pair of scissors and your uh, glass with a little bit of water and your paintbrush. I used this already, so here's my paintbrush with my water, just, just so that we could rinse it out at the end. Okay, if you are using a household hammer, which I think this hammer is older than me, I want to tell you that this is okay, but we are not whacking the heck out of this project. This is a lightly tapping type of project. We are not gonna hold it from here because the hammer is unwieldy and we won't be able to really control it. We are going to be holding it up here so that we have a little more control and we're not gonna hurt ourselves that way. We're gonna be very gentle with the nails. So we're gonna begin. The way I would begin is by making a nice clean surface so that we can work. Here we go, a beautiful surface. Here is our whale tail. We are going to take our scissors. Nope, we're not gonna take our scissors, I'm sorry. We're going to take our pencil and we're going to make a plan. This plan is going to be, where are we putting our nails? We're going to start by making a little X here and at the points of the tail here, here, and down here in the corners of the bottom of the tail here and here. After that, because this is where we definitely need nails in our design. After that, what I would do is about every half an inch, I would make an X. Don't measure it. Don't bother measuring it. Use your eye. It's going to be a little off, like here. There's two that are very close together. It doesn't have to be exactly even. This is for where the nails are going to be and where the string is going to wrap around the nails. Uh, once the string is wrapped around the nails, the distance between the nails is not going to be really noticed. So you don't have to worry about measuring or being a perfectionist or getting it exactly right. So here's one side and now let's do the other side. Approximately half inch, quarter inch is too small, larger than a half inch is too big. Somewhere in the middle of that is just right. So here we go going to do this all the way down with this project I am doing a video you are watching this video the video is useful because you can stop it at any time and 
pause while you're doing the work, come back to it afterwards, uh, replay it if you need to. There you go. Perfect. It looks almost like a cactus, really. We're going to take our scissors, cut around the outline. Again, not perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to, we just need this to be small enough so that we could place this where we want it on the board. About a half an inch away from the outline that you were given. Okay. So we'll take that extra away. Here's our whale tail with all our nail markings. Here is our piece of wood. Listen, this one is plain, happens to be plain, but I want you to know that any kind of texture is interesting. You may have one with knots. Those are my favorite ones. This is an older one. It's got cracks in it. So I think whichever one you have, whether it's plain or it has some character, it's going to look good. I personally prefer the ones that have character. Let's place our whale tail on the board. We're going to take a couple pieces of tape just to secure this where we're going to be wanting this eventually. Um, one at the top, one at the bottom. What we're going to be needing next are our nails. Let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna put my nails right here. You should have more than enough. I have this cute little, my husband's an engineer, so I have a lot of tools in my house. I got this cute little nail um, hammer, rather. We're going to be starting, but like I said, with the, with the big hammer, you can use this end right here. Actually, I'll do a couple with this, and then you'll see the finished product that I'm going to do. So right now I'm gonna start with my corners, hold it in place, hold the nail, These nails are three quarters of an inch in length. They have a nice flat head, which will be decorative at the end. We do not have to hammer this nail all the way in. All we have to do is put it in approximately a quarter of an inch. Look, didn't hurt my fingers. Once it went into the wood, I moved away so I wouldn't smash my fingers even further. Um, Tack this thing down. Some might be crooked, some might be straight. You could always tap it this way or this way. But whatever you do, make sure they're just even on the top. They can be a little crooked. You won't notice it later. So what I suggest is pausing the video. Take your time. Do not rush because rushing will get you hurt. Okay, if you need to ask for help, ask for help. And we will come back in a few minutes with all of our nails in place, okay? Okay, so here we are. Here's our whale tail with all of our nails in place. As you could tell, they're not all straight. Here's a crooked one. Here's a crooked one. They're not all perfectly straight. But when you look at it from the top, you can't tell because these nail heads are all flat. All right, our next step is to remove this piece of paper. We don't need it anymore. So take your time. It will not pull the nails off. We just don't need this paper anymore. I've done it before where I've put the string on and left the paper on. I, you could still get it off, but it's a little bit harder. Okay, almost done. We're going to be moving on to our next step, which is the embroidery thread. Let's move our hammer out of the way. Look at that. So now you could absolutely see the outline of a whale tail. This embroidery thread is I don't know if it's the same color that you have, a different color. It's not quite a dark blue. It's not quite a light blue. Take off the labels. There should be a loose thread here. We are going to pull it. It's going to open up. 
it's just going to keep coming apart nice and easily we're not going to be cutting this we're just going to pull from it okay to begin we're going to do i'm going to turn it a little bit so we have good access we're going to do an overhand loop which is kind of like the beginning part of tying your shoe see like this and we are going to tie it around our first nail and pull tight then we're going to secure it by making it into a knot with another overhand there you go so now we're we're cooking the technique I use is pretty much a zigzag technique to begin with we're going to be zigzagging all over this in stages a little bit at a time we're not going to go from here to here we're going to kind of zigzag the small area the small area the tail and then we're going to fill in the empty spaces where the string is not all right the way I do it is I put it I'm going to do this nail right here I put it there I hold the head of the nail with my finger and I twist it around and there it is taut nice and tall I'll do it again I'm going to do this nail now I just want to secure it with my finger now I have a different zigzaggy shape the reason why I put my finger there is just for that reason right there sometimes it pops off because you're trying to keep it taut you're trying to zigzag you're trying to make a design all at the same time so what I'm doing is I'm skipping a nail I'm doing this one and this one and this one but I'm skipping every other nail in the row okay so keep going we're gonna just do the whole tail zigzag it all the way across again take your time pause it if you're feeling a little overwhelmed with how it's going come back when you feel like you've caught up or you're good with the the technique of putting your finger there I'm still I'm skipping. No, I didn't skip that one though. No, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around. So you can see my design is a zigzag, right? It's not exact. It seems to be closer together here than it is over here. Don't worry about it. The more random it is, the more character you are going to have, the more homemade it's going to look, which is the point, that you, it looks like you made it. So now I'm going to fill in all of those heads, nail heads that have no string on them, the ones that I missed before. Keep going. Let's just say you made a mistake and you got a big knot going on and you're stuck right let's just say you did that my suggestion to you a good way to fix it <clears throat> excuse me is to snip the string end it that way you kind of start fresh we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna do an overhand knot over that nail pull it taut it's not supposed to be there it's supposed to be there <clears throat> excuse me and then we're going to do another overhand knot right over it now you have a knot you've made your mistake you've ended it where your mistake is and you're going to begin with a fresh a fresh string okay fresh string is the same technique we're going to do an overhand knot find a nail where you want to begin pull it tight 
do another overhand knot. Now we're going to just continue. We're going to continue where we were heading before with our finger technique. Doesn't matter if you wrap right or you wrap left, just however you do it, make sure it's taut. You don't have to pull it too tight. It's pretty thick. It's cotton. It's not gonna break, but you don't have to kill yourself pulling it. All right, so here's two. I've done the left and I've done the right. Now I wanna do here, so how do I get there? I'm going to try another strange zigzag. I don't want to I don't want to copy my zigzags. I want to always do something different, different angle. Like okay, if I did that, it's the same. But if I did that or that, it's different. Okay, so I'm going to do that one. I'm going to wrap over here and I'm going to go down the tail. Doing the same thing I did before, I'm going to skip every other one just to keep some space. In between so that when I come back up, I will zigzag the other way. All right, so my suggestion, hopefully you've learned all your little tricks. Um, my suggestion to you next would be to come back. Pause it, take your time, but you know, be neat in your work and come back when you're done. Uh, we're gonna end it the same way we began it or like where we had our little mistake, which is we're going to make a knot. And you can wait here cause I'll still be working or you can just come back at the end, okay? I'm gonna talk the whole time too, so. Okay, so look, now we've got a zigzag going down and it, it looks kind of neat, meaning um, clean and neat, not random. So now let's get that random quality by choosing other places. If you have a nail that has more than two or three strings on it, just go to there and push the strings down a little bit to make room for yourself. Here too, I'm going to do that. Just keep pulling your string off of your um, hank. And now we're going to do some random longer zigzags here. That way we can Give it some interest. Hopefully you're able to work this pretty easily. But like I said, you know, you take your time. Nothing is set in stone. Time is not set in stone to take to make this project or the, um, amount of string that you use. You can use a little or a lot. I'm gonna, I'm not using a lot, but I'm gonna use about half maybe of this thing, this amount of string that I have going on here. See, sometimes you have to push it down Zigzag over here, zigzag over here. Have fun with it. You know, when I was a kid, this type of art didn't look like this. It existed, but it didn't look like this. And as a matter of fact, it kind of looked, I didn't like it then. I like it much more now. Um, it was a lot of uh, browns and gold and orange and it was very 70s looking kind of yucky um, 
a lot of geometric shapes, which were ugly to me. Anyway, nowadays you can use them for uh, making, you know, like this is a whale tail. It's a specific thing. You can use it to make your, make an apple, make your initials, make a word. It's just so much more um, interesting than it used to be. Let's see, where should I go? I'm losing all my direction. Do you think I've done enough? I don't know. I want to kind of, I'm looking at it objectively. I'm saying to myself, look, this is a little emptier than most, so maybe I'll just do a couple zigzags here to fill in that space. Can't do that, can't do that. I've done that one. What if I go here? This nail doesn't even have any string on it at all. Okay, so now we're coming to the end. What do you do when you get to the end? That's the big question, right? What we're gonna do is, we're gonna first take, ask, we're gonna assess this whole thing. I think it's filled in very nicely. I like the color blue. All these nail heads, see how even if they're crooked now, they're looking nice and flat, but this whole thing needs like an outline to kind of punch it. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to, just go around every single nail, all the way around the whole whale tail. You see how I'm doing each one? Here I'm starting my finger technique again because it's getting crowded. Now going around each nail is gonna take a few minutes, but what it's doing is, as you can probably see, is that it's outlining your whale tail nicely. If it pops off, you just go right back and do what you were doing. If you have to turn your work, turn your work. Don't make it hard for yourself. Make it nice and easy. This should be enjoyable. Remember, you can always push the strings down if your nail heads are getting really filled with string. This is looking very nice. I'm sure yours are looking just as good, if not better. I'm, be I'm being very fast and a little sloppy, but you take your time. Don't hesitate to hit the pause button. Okay. Keep going. We're still pulling from that, that little thing of string there. There's still more string. There's plenty. You could probably do a little more zigzagging too if you wanted to at the end of this. Or at any time. push down those strings it's quiet in here so if anyone has any kind of uh, thoughts of what you're going to do with it when you're done I have some ideas I think since it's beachy and summery you could of course display this in your room because it's yours and you made it but of course it's a great gift if you're going to somebody's house and you want to give it as a little gift for a barbecue or housewarming type thing absolutely great great gift you could put it in in your house it doesn't have to be in your room could be in your kitchen could be in your living room or where you watch television you could do all of that this board has nothing on the back of it because I like the way it looks when it's like leaning against the wall. But you can also use like a command strip 
or you could put a fun tack on the back of it and stick it somewhere um, so it's actually hanging. You could do that. All right, we're at the end. All right, how do we end this? Just like we did before, we're going to clip off an end. We're gonna make a little bit of a knot here. We're gonna put it over our last nail. Last nail, just one nail. Then we're gonna do a second one and make a knot. And that's it. Okay, my suggestion to you, this is 100% unnecessary because it's knotted, okay? But if you wanted to just secure those knots and feel a little safer, I have some school glue. And with the cotton, it's perfect. Did I open it all the way? Let's put a little dot where the knots are. And it will dry clear. You'll never see it. Your knots will never open up. Okay, so I have four knots because we made that faux mistake. And once that is finished, we're going to approximately an eighth of an inch trim these off. Get that off my sticky finger with the glue. And one more. Okay. Finished. Ta-da. Beautiful. Love. Absolutely love. Next, we're going to be taking our Seize the Day wording like this. We are going to be turning it upside down with the side of the tip of the pencil. We're going to do one of these uh, graphite transfers. So press very hard and cover all the spaces where all the letters are. Again, if you want me to slow down, just pause the video. I'm trying to go through it quickly so that it doesn't feel like, you know, forever. But you work at your own pace. So I'm, I'm going over the whole thing, all the letters. The D is last. Okay, that's it. What we're going to do is minimize the size of this so that we can place it evenly and nicely on our board. We're not going to use any tape, but you can use tape if you prefer. So let's just say you prefer to use tape. This is the way it should look. You could just hold it down. You don't have to use the tape, but tape might make it easier to stay in place. There you go. That's great. Excellent. Taking our pencil, we're going to just trace over all of these letters. Doesn't have to be perfect because we have the font. We have what the letters are gonna look like. And it's just a going to give you like a very light guide for the paint. Okay, so the is the next one, and day is the last one. Seize the day is a play on words, right? Seize, like, grab it, grab the day. But this is seize the day with, like, the ocean. Okay, here you go. Ta-da! Again, it's a guide. This is not actually what you're going to be uh, working with. It's just so that we can paint over it nice and neat. So now you have this little tub of paint in your kit. Open it up. Get your paintbrush. Where's my... Okay. We're going to hold our paintbrush like a pen. We're going to dip it in there. It's black. Okay. What I suggest is taking a piece of scrap paper and just testing it, like how it's gonna look. That looks good to me. Um, it doesn't have to be a very dark black. I kind of like it if it's a little gray because it looks weathered, which kind of goes with the beach theme. 
and then we're going to just trace over all of our graphite transfer letters. You can do a darker black. I have a, I have one to show you at the end that is a little bit darker black if you prefer. But I like the gray a little bit. You can go back over it if you like. Take your time. You don't have to rush this because this is not something that you can really fix. You're going to have to go over it and make a bad mark into a beauty mark, which is something my grandmother always said about stuff like this. If you make a mistake, you make you take a, ba a bad mark and you make it into a beauty mark. Turn something into a flower, into a different type of font, but you could always do it. Almost finished. This one is going to go in my living room on my mantle. I love the quality of repetitive things because now obviously I have a couple of them from doing programs. If I put them all in a row, it's going to look really cute. Um, what you can do is now you know how to make string art. You could do this on your own. You could get your own piece of wood. It doesn't even have to be a piece of wood. It could be like a blank from Michael's, like um, like a jewelry box, a wooden letter. And you could do the same technique with the nails and uh, some embroidery thread. You, you know, you're going to have leftover embroidery thread. You could even do that if you like. Okay, there you go. See, so you see it's like darker and lighter, very pretty, just on its own. Um, my little dot here at the bottom of my exclamation point, I'm going to turn it into a heart, but you could do whatever you like. Another thing I like to do is accent the ends of the letters, it kind of gives it a little punch, just a little dot at the corners of some of these um, letters. Kind of brings it out, makes it look more like a calligraphy style. Just like that. And we're gonna also put some waves at the bottom. So let's feel the waves and let's just try to make um, Whatever we like. Just just do it lightly. Give it a little bit of a beachy feel. The waves don't have to be exact. If you want, you could put a seagull in there. This one's not coming out so great. I think it's the paint underneath. Okay, that looks kind of fun. If you want to do a couple dots like sea spray or a little seagull up there, you totally can. You absolutely could do anything you like. You could color it in, you can make them thicker, pointier, however you like. And we're finished. I really hope that you've enjoyed this and taken advantage of the video by um, stopping and starting it when you needed to. Let me get these out of the way so I can show you. So we have this Seize the Day that we just did together. Ta -da! Here's another one. This is a different shade of blue. This is much darker. I made it more black. But it looks the same. Looks like something that you bought in a store. Very professional. Here's a third one. That was my original sample. Same thing. Different shade of blue. Medium toned. Uh, sees the day and waves. And uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed this craft. 
take your time um, finishing it off. Show it off. Show it to everybody. Take a bunch of pictures. Send it to your librarian because they would love to see your pictures because everyone wants to show off their patrons' work. I would love to see it also. And my name is Lisa. I'm from Create Programs. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. Okay, how did your projects turn out? I hope they all turned out amazingly and that you have a good spot for them in your homes to look at them and admire your work. Here's mine, just so you could see. Um, if you have a moment, take a picture of it, send it to your librarian. I am sure they would love to have it over there. My name is Lisa Cologne. I am from Create Programs. I have an Instagram account. Check it out. It is Lisa Cologne One, and you can see my past projects and my current projects. So thanks very much for enjoying my program with me. Have a good one.